Imagine waking up to a world covered in ice and snow, where the temperature is way below zero, the snow is so deep that it hides cars, ice breaks power lines, and the wind screams like a banshee. No, it's not a scene from a dystopian movie, but a reality for millions of people who have experienced the impact of a disrupted polar vortex in the past few years. But what is the polar vortex, and why is it important? Could these extreme cold snaps push us into a new ice age? First, don't forget to click subscribe so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Many probably learned about the polar vortex for the first time in January 2014, when the temperature dropped to minus 50 degrees Celsius in some areas. A sudden collapse of the stratospheric vortex or sudden stratospheric warming caused the polar vortex to split into two parts over Northern America and Eurasia. As a result, cold Arctic air flowed southward, creating a record-breaking cold wave that affected millions of people in the US and Canada. The media called this event the polar vortex, but it was the effect of a disrupted polar vortex. Another case of a disrupted polar vortex happened in December 2020, when another sudden stratospheric warming event caused a massive disturbance in the high-altitude airflow. The polar vortex moved away from the pole and broke into two pieces, one over Siberia and another over Northern America. The piece over Eurasia later moved over to Europe. It caused a series of cold spells in different regions, including the US, where a historic winter storm hit Texas and other southern states in February 2021, leading to widespread power outages, water shortages, and the deaths of more than 200 people. So what is this polar vortex? The polar vortex is a large area of cold spinning air around Earth's poles. It is always present near the poles, but weakens in the summer and strengthens again in the winter. It moves counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere, creating powerful winds that hold the cold air near the poles. The polar vortex is there all year round, but it becomes massive and more expansive in winter when the temperature difference between the poles and the tropics is at its height. The polar vortex is not one fixed entity, but a dynamic and flexible system that can vary in shape and size depending on the atmospheric conditions. Sometimes the polar vortex can weaken or split into two or more smaller vortices, letting the cold air out and spilling into the mid-latitudes. The stratospheric polar vortex is a variable region of low pressure and cold air that can extend from 10 kilometers to 60 kilometers and from 60 degrees to 90 degrees latitude depending on the season and the atmospheric conditions. It forms in autumn when Arctic and Antarctic temperatures drop quickly as the polar night begins. The increased temperature difference between the pole and the tropics causes strong winds, and the Coriolis effect causes the vortex to spin faster. The stratospheric polar vortex breaks up in spring as the polar night ends. What stops this vortex from growing and growing? Usually the Arctic vortex is locked above the pole by a warmer jet stream a fast airflow that acts as a wall to the vortex, like the edge of a bowl. The cold air in the middle is heavier, stuck inside this bowl of warm air. It generally does not go over the bowl, or at least not often. When the Arctic gets warmer, parts of the cold wind vortex become weaker and distorted, allowing cold air to spill out of the polar region and warm air to enter it. The jet stream also becomes wavier and more erratic, leading to extreme weather events. These polar events show that the polar vortex can influence the weather of the mid-latitudes, but that doesn't mean it is getting more unstable and frequent. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, the number of sudden stratospheric warming events has not changed over the past 60 years, and there is no clear pattern in the strength of the polar vortex. However, some scientists have suggested that climate change may be altering the polar vortex in complicated and uncertain ways which we will explore soon. 
You should know that this polar vortex is not the cause of the cold weather, but rather a modulator of it. Cold weather can happen without a disrupted polar vortex. However, a disrupted polar vortex does not always make the atmosphere colder. Earth currently resides in an interglacial period amidst the Quaternary glaciation, a geological epoch marked by alternating ice cycles and ice-free periods. During these interglacial phases, the planet experiences relatively warmer global climates, resulting in the gradual retreat of ice sheets. The dynamics of this glaciation are influenced by a myriad of factors, including Earth's orbital movements, volcanic activity, solar variations, tectonic shifts, and changes in atmospheric composition. The Ice Age, commonly referred to as the last glacial period, took place from around 115,000 to 11,650 years ago. It reached its coldest, the most widespread point, around 26,500 years ago, during a phase called the Last Glacial Maxim, the LGM. However, our climate is not constant. It can undergo rapid changes due to the intricate interactions within the climate system. Notably significant climate patterns like the polar vortex and the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation play a pivotal role in altering global temperatures and climate conditions in various ways. The Atlantic meridional overturning circulation, AMOC, is a complex network of ocean currents responsible for transporting heat and salt from warmer to cooler regions, thereby influencing local climates and ice dynamics. The AMOC's behavior is sensitive to the influx of fresh water resulting from ice melt, which can alter the density and buoyancy of seawater. When the AMOC is strong, it takes warm water to the North Atlantic, making a more suitable climate in Europe and North America. When the AMOC is weak, it takes less heat to the North Atlantic, making a cold and dry climate in those places. The AMOC exhibited notable instabilities, particularly during the last ice age. It played a pivotal role as one of the components in a complex climate system that instigated abrupt climate shifts, including the Dansgaard Ostia and the Heinrich events. These events led to swift fluctuations in temperature, precipitation patterns, and vegetation, significantly impacting ecosystems and human populations. The inquiry into the polar vortex's connection to the ice ages and its susceptibility to climate change prompts an exploration of contemporary research and expert viewpoints in climatology and meteorology. Some experts propose a link between the polar vortex's southward shift and past ice ages. They argue that this shift reduces the heat transported to the North Atlantic, suggesting a positive feedback loop that could lead to a glacial period. However, this hypothesis faces skepticism. Opposing experts emphasize the short-term nature of the polar vortex compared to the long-term ice age cycles. They also note that the polar vortex is not the only factor that affects the climate. To clear some common misconceptions, the polar vortex isn't a recent occurrence, but a long-standing characteristic of the Northern Hemisphere's winter climate. It comprises two separate vortices in the stratosphere and the troposphere, with distinct characteristics. The polar vortex is not a sign of impending ice age or a result of global warming alone, nor can it independently trigger or prevent ice ages or global warming. However, the polar vortex can modulate climate viability within and between the glacial and interglacial periods. Melting sea ice and snow in the Arctic and Eurasia alter surface albedo, which in turn impacts atmospheric circulation and the formation of planetary waves. Planetary waves refer to large-scale atmospheric waves that span thousands of kilometers horizontally and are associated with the movement of the atmosphere in the Earth's middle and upper troposphere. These waves play a significant role in weather patterns, climate, and atmospheric circulation. They can affect the distribution of temperature, pressure, and wind patterns across regions and are associated with the jet stream and the movement of weather systems. 
Changes in surface albedo can influence the behavior and formation of these planetary waves, impacting weather and climate change. Additionally, greenhouse gases and aerosols can indirectly influence the stratosphere by interacting with the troposphere, the lower layer of the atmosphere. For instance, certain aerosols can contribute to ozone layer depletion, which, in turn, can lead to stratospheric cooling and the strengthening of the polar vortex. In addition to these dynamic interactions, it's essential to understand the role of feedback loops in climate systems. These loops play a critical role in amplifying or mitigating the effects of initial changes within the system. Whether they are positive or negative, these feedback loops significantly influence the system's responsiveness to external factors like greenhouse gases or solar radiation. The climate system consists of numerous such feedback loops involving various components including the atmosphere, ocean, land, ice and biosphere. According to the latest IPCC report, global average temperatures may likely reach 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit above pre-industrial levels between 2030 and 2052, carrying serious risks like extreme weather events, sea level rises, biodiversity loss and food insecurity. The report calls for rapid transitions and global cooperation to limit that level of warming. We must prepare and adapt to these changes, enhancing infrastructure resilience, early warning systems, public awareness and emergency response. This adaptation should integrate with mitigation efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and combat global warming, ultimately creating a climate-resilient future. Earth's climate history tells us how complicated and variable the climate system is and how its different parts influence each other. As the climate changes, the polar vortex may also change, bringing more surprises and uncertainty. How will this shape our reality in the future? No one knows for sure. If you want to see more space videos, click one of the cards on the screen and don't forget to subscribe.